Hey, this is Dan with School of Sheets. We make custom smart sheet solutions, and today I'm going to answer a question from the smart sheet community about duplicate values. Basically, we have somebody that is asking how they can identify any time an email address occurs more than one time in a column, and they've read about using a formula to automatically check a box in this case. Um, other people have certainly answered this question about what the formula is, so I'm not going to claim to have made that up. However, there's more to it than simply checking a box. You actually need to remove the duplicate in question. And it gets kind of interesting and complicated as well because you don't want to remove every single data point. You only want to remove the actual duplicate. So we're going to unpack this in this quick little database I made here and build out a full solution for whether it's an email address or a piece of inventory or a job, whatever it might be that you're you know, interested in you're going to be able to identify your duplicates and remove only those that appear after the fact. All right, so here's our email address. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a new column. Actually, I'm going to use the primary column. This is not something you'd actually need, but it will serve as a visual and kind of illustrate how we start to build these formulas. So I want to count how many times a particular email address appears in this column. So I'm going to use a simple count if my range is going to be the entire email column. And my criterion, what I'm evaluating is the email address at row. I'm going to convert this to a column formula. And now this is going to give me a number. And we see that Terry's in here three times, everybody else in here one. Quick little thing you can do is uh, add some conditional formatting. If occurrences is greater than one, Let's give a little visual cue that we have a duplicate, and I'm just gonna put it in the occurrences column so it doesn't get too distracting. So now we can pretty easily see this. For now, I'm gonna manually remove these, but of course we will do this automatically. This 40 is coming in here because we have technically blank data, so if you really want to, you can ignore blanks by making this account ifs, and again, querying the email column, I'll type it in manually. And we're going to use, we can use is text. You could also use, I mean, there's a, several ways you could do this. You could do does not equal empty space. You could do not is, let's just use not as blank. And we need to say at cell because we're looking at the cell itself and that'll fix that. All right, so let's just completely delete these rows since they're empty space. Now we want to actually identify what is a duplicate. So I'm going to use a flag symbol because that's a pretty common indicator of something that you want to keep an eye on. And pretty similar to this formula, I'm going to use if count if email, email, criteria on email, oopsies, email at row is greater than one, okay? Sorry, actually, we gotta do it like this. Value if true is going to be one, value if false is gonna be blank. So we're basically looking at the number of times that email in the row occurs in the entire column. If it exists more than once, we are going to make this flag turn red. If it does not occur more than once, meaning it's zero one time, we're not going to do anything. Well, it's impossible for it to be zero because it has to exist for us to evaluate it. So if we get a second Sam, now we have two of these. If we select some other random name here, it's going to find the one that it's associated with. And now we've kind of done the beginning of actually solving this problem. We were able to identify the duplicates. Um, however, we can't do anything about them. So at this time, you might think, okay, we want to move our duplicate data over. However, we don't actually know which one it is. So this is where it starts to get actually quite a bit more complicated and making a system to only find the first one. If you're going to ask this question, probably the answer you get is to use something like um, this formula where we do an if statement, basically like you make your range the email address in question, and then you go through the entire column.
you need to do, you can't use an at row here. Same thing, greater than zero, or greater than one rather. Okay, that's the formula. So they would basically say, look at the range of, it'll be easier to see this if we drag this down. The most common answer you probably get is make a formula where you're looking at the range of data from the first row to the row in question, and then find the duplicates because what will happen is, so we see it's not actually um, tr putting a value in this particular row, which is technically a duplicate because it's the first time it appears up to the point it's in this row. And that works if you're gonna be in some type of data set where you're pretty predictably adding stuff over time. However, you cannot turn this into a column formula because you're not completely using, you're using a, um, a locked reference to the first row. So that's a limitation of this. And again, it might work for some people, but it's not totally foolproof. So we're gonna kind of jazz this up. So rather than do a first duplicate, what I'm gonna do is first, <clears throat> we're gonna add a auto number column and this is simply going to populate every row with a number. It's starting at 13 because I was playing around with this sheet and it basically, it keeps a historical memory of every time a row is created. We can reset it though. We might as well so it looks fresh. And this is a neat little trick if you're wondering how to reset auto numbers. We're gonna start this at one and now it completely resets. Let's make our text size the same. Nice big text so we can see. All right, so what we're gonna do here is sort of a series of steps to find every ID number that is associated with the duplicate for a particular email address, and then pick all of the IDs out that are not the first instance. That way we're going to ignore the first instance of an ID that is a duplicate value, and figure out all the later duplicate values so that we can remove those and retain our original one. So might sound like a lot, we're gonna go step by step here. There's gonna be a few unnecessary columns that we're gonna get rid of in the end, but I wanna kind of illustrate a step-by-step -step process to show how this process works. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make a column that is going to give me all of my duplicate IDs in one. And for this, I'm gonna use a join collect. What we're gonna do is, all right, collect, gotta spell it right. Collect is a pretty useful function that allows you to reference a, a range of values and specify multiple parameters across different um, you know, criterions and then pull together all those values that fit your one or several criterions. So in this case, I want to be pulling in row IDs. I want these ID numbers. And I only want the IDs that match a certain series of specifications. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look at the email address. And I only want to pull in the IDs that are associated with the email addresses that are in this particular row. So if I just go ahead and do this, I get two, um, I get two one five, and that's probably because it's pulling in two and fifteen. That's what's happening. So with the join, we can add a delimiter. We can put a comma or something in. That way, we can actually visualize this in a, you know, way that's practical. Another fun thing we can do that I think is even better, if we use a multi-select dropdown, if we put care 10 as our delimiter, if you don't know, care 10 is smart sheet language for carriage return. So it's gonna basically push the values onto separate imaginary lines. And a new line is also smart sheet speak for a independent multi-select option. 
So now we're going to basically output all of the IDs associated with a particular email address. All right, so what we can do to isolate just the IDs that are literally duplicates is in this formula, we can add a second parameter. And we can use this existing column, duplicate, duplicate is equal to one. Now, anything that's not a duplicate, these don't exactly, um, they don't exist. All right, so now what we can do is use some of this uh, formula language to make what we'll ultimately use as our last formula to find the, well, actually, we're going to need two more. We're going to need a rank column, and we're going to need a um, remove column. What we're going to do with this rank column is look at all of these IDs and we're going to compare the row ID to the list here and provide a numerical rank like one, two, three, four, five um, relative to only the duplicate IDs. Then we're going to have another, you know, maybe some, we can use a checkbox here. Why not? We're going to check this box. If the ID in the row is amongst the IDs, or sorry, if the ID in the row, or if the rank is just, we don't actually technically need to look at the ID. As long as the rank is greater than one, that's going to satisfy our conditions. Okay, so now we're going to use uh, rank Q here so we don't get potentially um, decimal points. We want integer numbers. All right. And we are going to rank the row ID. And the range we are going to look at, we want to actually look at this duplicate ID. So I'm, this is going to air out for a second. I'm going to copy this collect portion because this represents the subset of IDs that are associated only with duplicates. And my order here is going to be one because I want ascending. And it outputs no match here, which is fine because there's no duplicate values to speak of. If there's not a data set to query. However, for all these ones that were their duplicates, we can actually see we're getting a one or a two. And if we had, you know, many more Joes and we, we have to save it so the ID appears, we now will get a higher and higher value. And if we reproduce this entire data set here, we are going to get all sorts of ranks. Now, one thing you might want to do is we can throw an if error around here so we don't get this annoying no match. You can use, I use a dash sometimes, I use NA, you can just leave it blank. It's not super important. And now we have a neat little uh, ranking system. So again, we technically don't need this column. It was just there for learning purposes. And now we can use, okay, if rank is greater than one, we want to check this box. And now we are checking everything that needs to get removed. All right, so I have sort of reset this data set and we can move some of this stuff over. We don't actually need these guys, so let's just look at the duplicates and the remove column. We can hide these guys. So again, now what happens is as we add existing items to this data set, and we have to save it, we get our all of our duplicates flagged and then we get this little remove checkbox for anything that is not the first instance. So the last step here is to set up a automated workflow that is going to remove any row where this remove box is checked. All right, so we're going to go into automation and we're going to create a workflow from scratch and we're going to call it remove duplicates. When rows are added or changed, we're going to use as our trigger. And when remove changes to checked, when it's triggered, we are going to move rows to another sheet. I have a sheet, it's called underscore, underscore, underscore duplicate data. 
I lied. It's actually called underscore 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 duplicate emails. And right now, it's just a uh, totally blank sheet with the same name of the primary column. And we are going to save this. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put these two side by side so you can see the magic happen in real time. All right. So this trigger is based on things changing. Nothing's actually changed. At this point, since we set up the workflow following our kind of making the duplicates exist, so now let's go ahead and see what happens if we put Bob for a second time and then this remove box checks. Patience is a virtue, so you wait for generally less than a minute for the automations to kick in, but sometimes they can take a little bit longer. And we can see, oh, we have changes on this sheet. Let's refresh. We have changes on this sheet. Bob has appeared. And Bob has disappeared here. So note that um, if you use a move or copy row automation, the destination sheet where the data is going to, it's going to inherit the column structure from your existing sheet. And everything's going to go in as plain text um, by default. In this case, this doesn't actually really matter. This just serves to be an area for stuff to go to. In some instances, you might actually want to be able to have a record of your duplicates and whatnot. You might want to put formulas in here, but in this case, it's not really um, applicable. So let's go ahead and just put a whole bunch of crap in here, kind of see what happens. Bunch of Sam's in, copy and paste all this. Let's do this all again. Let's move a bunch of stuff down and just kind of play around with this. All right. So now we have um, just a random, a random mess that has occurred. And let's see if I, our automation can clean this up. Wow, look at that. A whole bunch of stuff just popped in here. We removed all of these guys. And we have a nice clean sheet once again. So this uh, actually this concludes the whole video at this point. What I, I'm honestly kind of surprised. I went into this, I was like, oh, this is going to be a really actually quick and easy question to answer. And I totally recorded this over because I realized that there were a few more steps needed to make this a practical solution as opposed to simply checking a box and having a flag exist. So this is um, a totally automated way to remove duplicates. You could modify this um, with your remove formula and your rank formula. If you wanted to retain only the most recent one, um, you could do something like, let's see here. In our rank formula, we would want to remove this order part. And now we would get the box checked for the first ones to be removed. So we'd be um, keeping a record of our later editions. You know, this might make sense in some instances. Uh, but point being, you know, Smartsheet's pretty cool that if you have some technical know-how, you can make it do just about anything. I mean, not anything by for sure, but you can do a whole lot of stuff. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you liked it, do all the good YouTube stuff with the thumbs up button and subscribe if you like this type of information. And if you are looking for some help with your Smartsheet development, uh, you, there's a link in our description. You can fill out our new client interest form and we can make a system for you. We can work on your existing system or just answer some questions you have. So thanks for watching and have a great day.